Hi everyone, this is Madam Liang. I will be with you in this video session for the introduction to experiment one. The title of this experiment is Measurement and Uncertainty. Please follow the steps below to complete your practical task. Before you enter the lab, step one, spend about five to seven minutes reading the contents of experiment one. Step two, watch the online virtual teaching video on introduction to experiment one, which is this video. Step three, answer all the questions in the pre-lab module for experiment one. Check your answers and do the necessary corrections. Step four, fill in items A and B in the jotter session. Figure out an appropriate data table to record readings that will be obtaining when carrying out the experiment. Step 5. Watch the demonstration video on experiment 1 before you enter the lab. When you are in the lab, step number 1. Put on your lab coat and button up. Step 2. Remember to bring your physics lab manual and physics practical workbook for every session of the practical work. Step 3. Bring graph paper, long ruler and necessary stationaries no mobile phone or silent eat and place in the front table. Step 4. Set up apparatus, do measurements, record the readings in the data table, jot down observations and possible errors occurring during the experiment. Step 5. You will be evaluated based on the practical skill scoring rubrics available in the physics practical workbook. For report writing, Step 1. Watch the online virtual teaching video on report writing guides for experiment 1. Step 2. Write your lab report in the report writing session. Step 3. Your lab report will be evaluated based on the report writing skills rubrics. And lastly, refer to your lecturer when to submit your lab report. Please pause the video for about 5 minutes to read the content of experiment 1. You may refer to your own physics lab manual if you have received it. If not, please refer to the following slide to read the content of experiment 1. Please read the learning outcomes, the theory, the list of apparatus, and the procedure. Measuring a physical quantity has become an important part in physics experiments. However, not all the measured values are exactly the same as the actual value. The difference in the actual value and measured value is so-called error or uncertainty. Errors occurred in an experiment could be caused by experimenters or perhaps the measuring instrument used itself may not be accurate or sensitive enough. Therefore, the uncertainty of a measurement must be recorded together with the measured value as x plus minus del x, where x is the measured value and del x is the uncertainty. Therefore, the percentage of uncertainty is calculated using del x over x multiplied with 100%. If the percentage of uncertainty is less than 15%, then the measurement that recorded is acceptable. The tennis ball has a diameter of 6.4 plus minus 0.1 cm. So what does it really mean? This means that the actual value lies somewhere in between 6.3 cm and 6.5 cm. What is causing the uncertainty in a measurement? Basically, there are two types of experimental errors, systematic error and random error. Systematic errors consistently influence a set of measurements in a particular direction. All the readings are higher than the actual value with positive error or all the readings are lower than the actual value of negative errors. Whereas the random errors occur when the readings have slightly higher 
or slightly lower than the actual value, which means the readings contains of either positive error or negative error or same as the actual values. You can reduce the systematic error by taking the precautions and using different instruments, whereas you can reduce the random error by repeating the measurement and calculating the average. It is not easy to spot right away the systematic error, but it may become evident when a linear graph that should cross the origin has a relevant y-intercept. It is easy to spot random error when collecting data by the variance of the readings. What are the causes of the systematic error? For example, an observer consistently making the same mistake, an instrument with zero error, or apparatus calibrated incorrectly. The causes for random error are wrong positioning of the eyes when reading a scale from different angles, the scale of an instrument is wrongly read or recorded, or change in temperature or wind while doing the experiment. 1.1. The uncertainty of a single reading or measurement depends on the type of measuring instrument that is used. The uncertainty of each measurement can be categorized as below. A. If the reading is taken from a single point or at the end of the scale, the uncertainty is calculated using this formula, which is half of the smallest division from the scale. B. If the readings are taken from two points on the scale, the uncertainty is calculated using this formula, which is the smallest division from the scale. C. If the apparatus uses a vernier scale, the uncertainty is the smallest unit from the vernier scale. If the reading is taken from a single point or at the end of the scale, the uncertainty is given by half of the smallest division from the scale. For example, when you want to measure the length of an object, you place one end of the object at the starting point, which is the zero mark of the meter rule. You just need to read the other end of the object, which is 4.2 cm. For single point reading, the uncertainty is given by half of the smallest division, and the smallest division for meter rule is 0 0.1 cm. Therefore, the uncertainty for the land measured is 0 0.05 cm. Since the uncertainty consists of two decimal places, thus the measured value must also consist of two decimal places. So, the reading recorded for the length of the object is 4.20 plus minus 0.05 cm. Both the measured value and the uncertainty consist of two decimal places. If the readings are taken from two points on the scale, the uncertainty is given by the smallest division from the scale. We are measuring the length of the same object, but this time we place it away from the zero mark of the meter rule. We need to read from two points for the length of the object. One end, the reading is 1.4 cm. The other end is 5.6 cm. So the length of the object is 5.6 cm minus 1.4 cm, which is 4.2 cm. And the uncertainty of this measurement is the smallest division of the meter rule, which is 0 0.1 cm. Therefore, the length of the object is recorded as 4.2 plus minus 0 0.1 cm. Since the uncertainty consists of one decimal place, therefore the measured value also consists of 
one decimal place. If the apparatus uses a vernier scale, the uncertainty of the measurement is given by the smallest unit from the vernier scale. For example, using vernier calipers to measure the diameter of an object. Even though the main scale is in cm, you may record the reading of the main scale in mm as the uncertainty of the vernier scale is plus minus 0.02 mm means that each division of the vernier scale is 0.02 mm. Start taking the reading on the main scale, the value of the nearest line to the left of the indicator 0 on the vernier scale, so the main scale reading is 3 mm. The reading on the vernier scale is the line 29 that coincides with this line on the main scale. So the vernier scale reading is 29 times 0.02, which is 0.58 mm. So the diameter of the object is the sum of the main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading. So the diameter is 3 mm plus 0.58 mm gives us the diameter of the object as 3.58 mm. The uncertainty of the diameter is the smallest unit from the vernier scale, which is 0.02 mm. Therefore, the diameter of the object is recorded as 3.58 plus minus 0.02 mm. And the uncertainty consists of two decimal places. Same as the measured value also consists of two decimal places. Another apparatus that uses a vernier scale is micrometer screw gauge. The main scale of the micrometer screw gauge is in mm. And the smallest division between the first line and the second line on the main scale is 0.5 mm. The vernier scale of the micrometer screw gauge is also in mm. And each division of the vernier scale is 0.01 mm. Start taking the reading on the main scale. The value of the nearest line to the edge of the timbal is 2.5 mm. The reading on the vernier scale is the line 38 that coincides with the datum line. So the vernier scale reading is 38 times 0.01, .01, which is 0.38 mm. So the diameter of the object is the sum of the vernier scale reading and the main scale reading. So we take 2.50 plus 0.38, which is 2.88 mm. The uncertainty of the diameter is the smallest unit from the vernier scale, which is 0.01 .01 mm. Therefore, the diameter of the object is recorded as 2.88 plus minus 0.01 .01 mm. Since the uncertainty consists of two decimal places, so the measured value must be also consisted of two decimal places. 1.2. Random error can be reduced by repeating the measurement. For a set of n repeated measurements of x, the best value is the average value given by this formula. The uncertainty is given by this formula. The result should be written as x plus minus del x where x is the average value of the measurements and del x is the uncertainty of the measurement. The percentage of uncertainty is del x over x multiplied with 100%. For example, using the micrometer screw gauge to measure the diameter of an object. To reduce the random error, the measurements of the diameter of the object is repeated for 5 times. Then we calculate the average value of the diameter, which is 2.88 mm. The uncertainty of the diameter is the summation of the modulus of the average value minus each of the measured value. So when we sum them up, it is 0 0.016 and we round it up to 0 0.02 mm because the readings are measured to the second decimal place of a millimeter. Therefore, the diameter of the object is 2.88 plus minus 0 0.02 mm. Both the measured value and the uncertainty consist of two decimal places. The percentage of uncertainty is calculated 
by using this formula 0 0.02 divided by 2.88 multiplied with 100%, so it is 0.69%. The second column shows the calculation of the average diameter for object 2 and the third column shows the calculation of average diameter for object 3. The uncertainty of the diameter for object 2 is 0 0.004 when rounding up to two decimal places it gives 0 0.00 mm and the del D for the third object is 0 mm. The del D obtained above is either downloaded off becomes zero or exactly equals to zero. Will the final result be stated as 2.88 plus minus 0 0.00 mm? For this case, the uncertainty cannot be zero. It should be at least the uncertainty of the instrument used. For this example, we use micrometer school gauge. Therefore, the uncertainty is 0.01 mm. Thus, the final result will be stated as 2.88 plus minus 0.01 mm. The percentage of the uncertainty is 0.01 divided by 2.88 multiplied with 100%, which is 0.35%. How to use the instruments like meter rule, vernier calipers, and micrometer screw gauge to take measurement? How to avoid parallax error? How to check for zero error? Please pause the video and take about 5 to 10 minutes to read the following slides to recall what you had learned in Form 4 Physics Chapter 1. Please read measurement of land and parallax error. Please read the structure of vernier calipers, how to use it, and zero error. Please read the structure of micrometer school gauge, how to use it, and zero error. Using traveling microscope to measure the internal diameter of the capillary tip. We place the sample of the capillary tip right under the objective lens. Then we place our eye near the eyepiece. Then we adjust the knob so that we can move the objective lens closer or away from the sample to get a clearer image. Then we adjust the screw beside here so that we can move the vernier scale along the rails either to the left or to the right to measure the internal diameter of the capillary tube. This is the picture of a capillary tube and we are going to measure the internal diameter of the capillary tube which is very very small and the size of the hole is between 0.8 mm to 1 mm with the samples that we have in our lab. Place the sample right below the objective lens and then we see through the eyepiece and we can see the cross hairline and please adjust the capillary tube manually so that the hole is in the middle of the cross hairline. Then we use the screw to adjust the cross hairline to the left to take the reading of the D left and then we adjust the cross hairline to the right of the hole so that we can measure the reading of the D right. The difference, the modulus difference between the D right and the D left that is the internal diameter of the capillary tube. The uncertainty of the vernier scale for the traveling microscope is plus minus 0.01 mm and the main scale is with the smallest division of 0.5 mm. If the D left that we measured is 5.94 mm and the D right is 5.01 mm, then the internal diameter of the capillary tube is 5.94 minus 5.01 and the internal diameter is 0.93 mm. So the result for the internal diameter is 0.93 plus minus 0.01 mm. Both the measured value and the uncertainty are having the same number of decimal places, which is 2. And the percentage of uncertainty is 0.01 divided by 0.93 multiplied with 100% and 
it is just 1% of uncertainty, which is less than 15%, which means the result of the internal diameter that we measured is acceptable. How to read the measurement using the traveling microscope? The zero mark on the vernier scale is the indicator to take the reading on the main scale. Then look for the line of the vernier scale that coincides with the main scale in order to take the reading of the vernier scale. The sum of the main scale reading and the vernier scale reading, that is the measurement taken using the traveling microscope. If the zero mark of the vernier scale is positioned more than 0.5 mm or 0.05 cm division of the main scale, read the vernier scale reading from the upper part of the vernier scale. If the zero mark of the vernier scale is positioned less than 0.5 mm or 0.05 cm division of the main scale, read the vernier scale reading from the lower part of the vernier scale. Based on the diagram on the left, the zero mark is more than 0.5 mm of the main scale division. The main scale reading is 5 mm. Since the main scale is in cm, you may convert it to mm for easy reading as the vernier scale is in mm. The vernier scale reading is 0.94. Read from the upper scale directly. The diameter of the object is 5.00 plus 0.94, which is 5.94 mm. Or, the main scale reading is 5.5 mm. You want to consider the 0.5 mm in the main scale reading. Then the vernier scale reading is 0.44. Then you read from the lower vernier scale. The diameter of the object is 5.50 plus 0.44, which is 5.94 mm. Whether you take the reading using the upper vernier scale or lower vernier scale, the result is the same. Remember to watch the demonstration video on experiment 1 before you enter the lab to carry out the experiment. That's the end of this video session. Thank you for your time and good day.